Can you roll over money from a current 401k account into a solo 401k account to invest in real estate? Can you please explain the taxes I would be responsible for paying on any gains made on a real estate investment using money in a solo 401k? What do you think? Yeah, so I picked this one because I think there's a lot of confusion uh, going on here. Can one move from a 401k to a solo? You could, but if you're if it's with your current employer, typically they won't let you move that until you uh, you leave that 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 uh, position. And once you go out, you retire from there or whatnot, then you could move it over to a solo 401k. But generally speaking, if you're still employed somewhere, they probably won't let you move it over. Um, and and so no, you would be limited in, in being able to invest in real estate. But once it got to the solo, yes, then you can. If you have a properly set up solo 401k, we really max ours out as far as options here at Anderson, the solo 401ks that we set up. They're not all created the same. Uh, and as far as the taxes, again, there aren't any, unless you uh, happen to be going from a traditional into a kind of a, four, a Roth type 401k and you're doing some kind of rollover in that sense, you might pay some tax. But otherwise, there isn't any taxing gains when we're in a retirement plan of any nature. Uh, it just goes up tax free until you take it out later on, typically at retirement. <laughs> That was a good answer. Got one right. <laughs> yeah, no, you nailed them. So, if your employer does have it, it's called in-service uh, rollover. So, if, if I can do an in-service uh, transfer, then you can move it into another four hundred one k. Most don't allow it. Ours do, but but most uh, don't. But yeah, then you put it into a solo four hundred one k, which means it's you, a business partner, you and a spouse that are the, the only owners of a business or only employees of the business, excuse me, it has to be the employees. And you could roll that right on in there. And if it's self-directed, like Anderson, it's wide open. Uh, you can absolutely, you you get to choose what you invested in. A lot of places, like if you open up at a brokerage house, they only let you buy securities. That's why you can't do real estate in it. Uh, but when you do it with a group that has their own plan, like so you would just, you would adopt the Anderson 401k uh, then it's our Anderson 401k prototype plan, then you would adopt it. Then you could absolutely invest in real estate. The only thing that I would change a little bit is the gain, there's, there's, it's exempt. So even in a 401k, you can have debt and it doesn't change things. That is not the case for an IRA. IRAs have UDFI, which is unrelated debt finance income. If you have debt and there's going to be a tax bill, if you're making money leveraging your real estate, that does not happen inside of a 401k. Inside of a 401k, you can have debt. Uh, so there's no tax in there. It's exempt until one thing, you take it out. So if you hit 73 and you start taking withdrawals, now you have to be cognizant. If all you have in there is real estate and you're getting partial interest of that real estate, it is taxable. So that amount is taxable as ordinary income to you. When, when it comes out, it's a small amount. It's the required minimum distributions. Uh, unless you want to give it directly to a uh, charity, in which case you'd have to roll your 401k into an IRA, then start giving it. Um, gets a little complicated, but there's ways to do it. But there's never a tax. Like you could go nuts in there. You don't need 1031 exchanges anymore. You can just go bonkers in there, buying all the investment real estate that you want. You could say, I'm going to be uh, innovation homes. I'm going to start buying all these houses all over the country. And I'm going to sell some when they go up. And you're just sitting there managing that puppy. The one thing you can't do is pick up a hammer and start fixing the house. So you always got to use third parties. You got to make sure that you're not painting it, fixing it up or adding value to it. You can't personally do that because you're a participant and you'd be, you'd, you'd disqualify the plan at that point. Yep. Capiche? So hopefully that helps. <laughs> Somebody says, oh, there was a question. Let me see if I could actually, sorry, guys, I'm going to have to roll this back. Uh, can you speak to mega backdoor Roth as a sole proprietor? You can't. Uh, I mean, I guess you could try. Can Yeah, sole proprietor, I suppose, could do a 401k. You'd have to put it in the employee side, like you'd have to have a bucket. I'm used to dealing with S Corp and C Corp, and you actually are an employee. You have three buckets. You have the employee deferral, you have the employer contribution, and then you have the Roth, and you do an in-service role from the employee contribution that you haven't taken a deduction for during the year and you roll it into the Roth and you never take a deduction and now you have $66,000 sitting in a Roth 401k. I suppose you could still do that uh, with the sole proprietor because all of your income is considered employee. Um, 
if somebody says you can still throw a hammer through the neighbor's window, that's it. <laughs> John's already hitting the sauce. Yeah, that's what's going on. Hey, guys, if you like this snippet of Tax Tuesday, then I invite you to click the link and actually subscribe to become a Tax Tuesday member. Every other week, we do these live, and you, too, can ask your questions, and myself and my team will answer your questions on the next Tax Tuesday.